Hey guys, welcome to Make Anything. I'm Devin, and this is Spoik. Spoik the Pinyama, as named by my followers over on my Instagram page, rejected.animals. If you haven't checked it out, go ahead. It's my, my page where I share daily drawings like this, and sometimes I let my followers name them because it's fun, and it creates user engagement, thus pleasing our algorithmic overlords. Spoik here is gonna be our model for today's 3D pen project. And once again, we're gonna get a little bit experimental since my last attempt at using acetone smoothing to smooth out 3D pen models didn't work so well. Today, we're gonna try a different approach for a similar result. Today, we're gonna try to use this thing to smooth out our 3D pen models. This is a polisher by Polymaker and they make a special filament called PolySmooth. The way this works is you pour some rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol into this machine and it creates a cloud of alcohol mist which reacts with this specific filament and smooths it out. Now this filament is made for 3D printers, not really 3D pens, but it has similar properties to PLA. I don't see why it wouldn't work. But just in case we're gonna be using the $15 super cheap 3D pen that I used for my great wide shark, my last rejected animal. It worked really well, so hopefully it doesn't fail, but let's just go ahead and get straight to it. Cool. All right, so let's get started by turning on the 3D pen. I'll set it for PLA at 210 degrees, and then I'll load in that white poly smooth filament. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I did pick Spoik specifically because of the way that he's drawn. He kind of has distinct sections, and I figured that'll make it easier to split this up into separate parts if I need to do that in order to fit it into the polisher. So the whole body will be made with that white polysmooth filament. And then for the legs, just to give it some contrast, I figured I'd use some of this timber fill from Filamentum. I think I'm gonna go with this darker one just to create a more striking difference between the fur and the legs. To start out, I'll usually draw a two-dimensional profile, either the front or side, depending on which gives more information. But with this one, I realized that it might not be the best way to do things, considering how Spoik is made specifically with these individual sections. Instead, I thought it would be easier to just draw one long strip of fur like this, and then I can peel that off wrap it into a cylinder and stick it together to create a whole section in one mostly seamless piece. That seems like it would work out, but as I started to fill this in, I realized that's gonna take a long time to fill in. So I should probably go a little bit smaller. So here's my shorter strip, and this time I'm also gonna fill it in twice to make it a nice sturdy piece. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and heat it up with my heat gun and curl it up afterwards. Once again, I just have to fill in that one seam, and then I've got this really nice cylindrical piece. This one looks like it could be the start of the neck. All right, that seems to work, so let's jump to the next one. Here you can see a close-up of the filament, and you'll notice that it's bubbling quite a bit. And that probably has a lot to do with the fact that this filament has been standing out for at least a year, so it could use a run through my filament drying system. But in any case, I figure we're gonna smooth it out so it's not such a big deal. Most of those bubbles will hopefully just smooth over. It's also worth noting that this poly smooth is quite a bit stinkier than your standard PLA. So I have a fan drawing the air away from me and it's probably a good idea to have pretty decent ventilation. All right, let's curl up this second piece. And then the idea is just to stick them into each other like this, although it isn't that easy to get them exactly the right size to all fit together. Oh, my pen clogged. Yeah, I found out that basically you can't have this poly smooth filament just sitting in the pen. You either have to be extruding or you have to pull the filament out because it will clog the pen pretty quickly. Anyways, I went ahead and stuck these pieces together and I noticed that these triangles on the back one are quite a bit larger than the other ones and they're not really supposed to get larger, so I'm gonna kinda cut these down. The great thing about working with 3D pen is you can just constantly make changes. I also decided to stick on some extra pieces of fur to just add another ring between these two because they were spaced apart a little bit too much for my liking. 
I stuck these little bits of filament on the bottom here just as a placeholder for where the legs will go. Just to help me kind of sort things out since I am improvising this quite a bit. And you know what? Why don't we actually start drawing the legs out just so that we have those there for reference. So I'm gonna load up my pen with that rosewood timber fill that I chose earlier. It's got this really nice reddish woody color. And I'm just gonna start drawing out my legs using my typical technique of drawing a profile and then building up a wall, adding struts to that, and then just generally fleshing it out from there. All right, that's one leg and there's the rest. These will help us continue figuring out how this is gonna come together and just working on it as we go. I'll keep adding more of these little fur flaps because that technique of adding them after the fact actually works pretty well. Once they're on there, I'll start filling them in with more solid, consistent back and forth strokes. This works pretty well because the new layer of plastic heats up the whole part a bit so that you can kind of bend it and shape it and make it look a little more dynamic and interesting. Now for the backside, I'm gonna take my more standard approach and once again, build this kind of structure and build up from there instead of that cylinder technique because that really wouldn't work for this rounded end. And that actually worked really well. Then just like before, I can start adding individual fur pieces and building up the coat like that. That's actually a bit easier than the way I did it earlier. So maybe if I started over, I would start from the back and just work my way forward. But now we've got the two halves and then this piece will go in the middle to connect the two. So I'll start by adding that section to the back part and then I'll start filling this in again. Once again, I'm gonna to try to get these long consistent strokes that go all the way back and forth up until that edge where I'll be adding the next layer of fur. Once I had that technique pretty well figured out, things were going swimmingly and I was making really good progress. I got this far until that $15 3D pen finally pooped out. Here you can see the frozen display and there's even a little bit of smoke coming out and there was that burning electronic smell before the whole thing just turned off. So there you go, I guess five hours of continuous operation is not the best idea with a cheap 3D pen like this. Or probably any 3D pen for that matter. Ah oh well, luckily I have a backup pen so I was able to just get right back to it. And here I'm adding more of those fur pieces, specifically around the legs, to pretty much hide that connection between the timber fill legs and the fur. At this point, the body's pretty much done, so it's just time to go ahead and finish it off with the head. So once again, I'll draw a profile and I'll stick that into place, wrap that all up with some filament until we get a nice general shape, and then of course we'll finish it off with that final solid layer. Again, you can see I'm intentionally following the direction of the fur with my strokes, and that's gonna help give us a nice final texture. Lastly, we just need a stick on the ears, and that'll do it for all the parts that we're planning to smooth out. All right, so it took me maybe six or eight hours to get this far. It's a lot of work to fill in things, but uh, yeah, we've got a pretty good looking spoik body here at least the part that we want to smooth out. The proportions did end up kind of crazy. He's got the, the Pixar proportions with the massive head, but I think it looks kind of cute. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward with this. I'm gonna have the two halves, build little stands, fit them in the polisher, and see what happens. It's pretty lumpy, it's a 3D pen model, what can you expect? But it'll be interesting to see what kind of effect happens when we try to smooth this out. So let's go ahead and do it. So here's the polisher, and as you can see here, the platform kind of raises out of this chamber. And I just wanna test the positioning and fit here, and it does look like it is gonna be a very tight fit for this front half of Spoik here, but I think we can do it. My plan is to quickly construct some little stands to hold these up in the right position. And to do that, I've got some bamboo skewers and a hot glue gun. So I'll just do a little bit of crafting, a little sticking, a little gluing, and eventually I've got something that looks kind of pretty, kind of decent. Eh, maybe a little more gluing, a little more tape. All right, there we go. That looks like it'll just barely fit. Let's try it out. Let's lift up this plastic shield, open up this little compartment, 
and we'll fill it up with the strongest rubbing alcohol we can find. I was able to get 91%, although 95 or higher is ideal. We will lower this part back down, and then let's see. Oh yeah, that's definitely a tight fit, but it it's a fit. It fits. Let's do it. There he goes, down into the chamber, the mysterious abyss. Best of luck, old pal. As you can see here, using this thing is as simple as twisting that knob to set the timer, and then the mist begins to rise as Spiky Boy slowly rotates around. I gotta say, it actually looks quite nice in there. Peaceful and refreshing. Just slowly spinning, being caressed with this gentle mist of alcohol. Well, that's until my structure collapsed. Catastrophic failure. Oh gosh. All right, I guess hot glue and tape is not the best way to build a structure for a humid environment. That kind of sucks, but it does give us the opportunity to try a more lo-fi experimental approach. Instead of using this polisher machine, I'm actually just gonna use a silicone cooking brush and use that to just drizzle alcohol over my model. It's not like the polisher is heating the alcohol or changing its properties in any drastic way. It basically turns it into a mist to get a nice even coating on your model, but this actually seems to work quite well as well, just brushing it on with this silicone brush. Sure, this is a bit more manual, a bit more labor intensive. It took me a couple hours and a couple dozen coats of this stuff, but you know what? I think I was able to get a pretty even coating on my model and sure enough, after a couple minutes, I already started to notice it smoothing out. I just went ahead and kept applying coats to this with a few minutes in between for the alcohol to dissolve and then I just left it overnight to dry. All right, as you saw, I had some problems with the uh, polisher there, but I ended up just dousing these models in alcohol using this cooking brush, and that actually worked really well. I didn't expect these models to be completely smoothed out because of how lumpy it was to begin with, but there's definitely a noticeable effect and the most noticeable effect though is in the finish. It turned from this matte white into this really glossy, wet looking finish. It looks like it's wet, but I assure you, it is completely dry now. So we can actually take these off of their stands, stick them together and finish off the legs and all the final details and we'll have ourselves a little spoik. I'll rip out this support structure that we were using and make sure that these two halves still stick together. Yeah, still a perfect fit, so we can go ahead and start assembling, although I am going to do a little bit of extra work on the legs. I wanted them to look a bit more solid, so I did one more layer where I'm really smooshing it in, and as you can see it actually blends really nicely and gives me this texture that I really like. This is the second project where I use timber fill with my 3D pens, and I really like the way they behave together. So I'll just go ahead and do that on all the legs, covering them completely, and this definitely makes them look a lot more solid, even though it is still mostly hollow. And that's awesome because it saves me a lot of filament. So now I'm happy with how those legs look. And to attach them to the rest of my model, what I'll do is switch the pen to ABS setting, which basically just means it's a lot hotter and the plastic will stay melted longer. And I'm just creating this big blob of molten plastic on the end of the leg here so that I can quickly press it into place and have it fuse into position. We'll do the same thing with the other legs as well. Just a big blob of plastic, put it into place, and you can see I press it down against the ground like that to make sure all the feet are touching because I want this to settle into the correct position. With these front legs, it was a little easier to access the connection between the legs and the fur, so I was able to actually use the pen and just directly go in there and melt them together. I used that blob technique to stick the two halves together as well, although that connection seems a bit weak. I'll probably go back in with some E6000 to glue those together a little later. All right, all that's left now are three dots for the eyes and the nose, and to do those, we're gonna switch to black PLA filament and just create these big blobs of black. Oop, that's a bit stringy, but 
I'll just go back in with that silicone brush and kind of use that to smush things down a bit to make sure I don't get any fingerprints on it or anything. Here's the second eye, and just like the other ear, I kind of offset it to match the drawing a bit more. So it's kind of wonky in 3D, but I kind of like that. Just the nose, and there we go. It's all complete, and we have ourselves a beautiful little spoik. Hey, we did it! Spoiky boy! He's so cute! <laughs> this little guy, he may not look exactly like the original drawing, but it's not bad. It's pretty close, equally derpy and cute, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. It definitely will fit in with uh, the Great Wide Shark in my growing collection of 3D rejected animals. As you can see, that poly smooth filament, it definitely does smooth out. There's clearly a smoothing effect but with something as lumpy as a 3D pen drawing, it's not gonna suddenly become magically smooth and perfect. But you know, if you were to take the time to sand this or smooth it down with a soldering iron before using the polisher or applying alcohol, it might become even more smooth. You might be able to get that really nice shiny finish. If you guys wanna see me try that with another animal, let me know in the comments because I've got plenty of rejected animals that I can choose from. And uh, yeah, I have fun doing these. I wanna know if you guys enjoy it or if you have any other ideas, 3D pen, 3D printing or otherwise, let me know in the comments. I'm here to make fun stuff for you guys. So that's what it's all about. Anyways, we made our spooky boy. So I'd say this project is definitely a success. It was definitely fun. And that's about it for today. So until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired. Boo! Boo, boo! <laughs> I guess that's the sound a spike makes. Boo!